These are my old Wescos. We're going to have a little talk up on these real quick. It's going to be a little engineer boot discussion. The history of this particular pair of boots. And, you know, what's going on with the state of my feet and whatnot. And whether or not I can still wear these things. So stay tuned. Okay, so what we have here are my engineer boots. You might notice that the shaft here is lighter in color than, I, what do they call this, the vamp, I think, than the rest of this boot. That's because these have been rebuilt. I originally bought these boots at the Von Dutch store on Melrose, I think it was 1999, 98 or 99, likely 99. <laughs> and... They fit great and I wore them around and I used to, every time I rode the motorcycle, I wore these. These are very stiff, as you can imagine, <clears throat> you know, heavy duty boots. They do have a steel shank in them. And I'm going to tell you, man, the, the steel shank on this boot in particular saved my right foot. I was uh, driving down Melrose. I was heading west on Melrose. This was uh, 2004 on my Triumph Bonneville at the time, and I'm flying, I wasn't speeding, but I'm cruising down there, you guys might not know Melrose at that spot, but it's, there's two lanes going in both directions, and there's a middle turn lane, and if you're heading west, as you come up to that intersection, there's a building that's built right to the corner, so it's what you would refer to as a blind corner, meaning as you are riding up to it, you can't see anything that's coming, I clearly have the red light, uh, now, coming at me, uh, there's a van that wants to make a left-hand turn in front of me here, but he's just waiting, but he's in the middle of the intersection. I see him there. And as I'm going through the intersection, at the last second, I see a car with my peripheral vision. And I got my, you know, hold on to the handlebars here, and I look right through here, and I can read Subaru. It's funny how your mind works in that split second. But I can read Subaru on the front of that car like this as I'm cruising through the intersection and I'm like, ah, oh, shit, this is going to hurt. <laughs> and I'm, I was literally cursing the guy out uh, as he hit me. He hit me and this van, right, that was coming along here, he's sitting there and I'm coming through the intersection. This guy hits me and I'm still on the bike and I go like this, bam, and I hit the whole side of that van and the bike goes down, but it the bike stops at that point because it wedged in the side of the van there and I get catapulted and I fly through the air according to the police uh, the witnesses what they told me when I was in the hospital I flew through the air like a rag doll about 25 feet or so hit the ground and rolled another 30 feet because I, I went from the middle of that intersection all the way down way beyond the little you know the way the paint line goes to create that turn lane I was beyond that I'm laying on my belly all twisted up, and I open my eyes, and I can see feet standing around me, <laughs> and I start moving, and I hear people go, oh, he's alive, uh, and that's all I'll tell you about that, but it was a pretty crazy accident, but another one of the many accidents that probably should have killed me, so he hit me right on this boot with the whole front end of that car, and it's cafe racer, so I'm up like this, and on this side, there's a frame of the bike there. And because this boot is so robust, it bent the frame of the bike, the steel tubing, it bent it, and it still didn't break my foot. Always wear proper foot gear when you're riding a motorcycle. So I had the presence of mind to have people help me out. I said, hey, man, pull this boot off. I can feel my foot swelling. I didn't want them to cut this boot off and totally wreck it. But it did knock the heel off, kind of. It was totally detached, and the boot was all effed up. So uh, I think at the time, I don't know if I had it built then, but I did send these back to Wesco, and Wesco rebuilt them for me. <clears throat> I don't remember what that cost. Now, prior to the rebuild, I had had probably two new soles put on it. Then I had them rebuilt, and then I think... Between the rebuild and 2010, I think I had another set of soles put on these. This, uh, I think they call this the mini lug. And I wore these a lot. I, the last, I had another accident in 2010 where somebody cut me off, uh, pulled a U-turn in front of me. 
and I really haven't worn these boots very much since then. Now this morning I got up and I uh, got to the shop early. I got a lot of work done, so I figured I got a few minutes to make this video. Um, but I watched a video this morning. I can't remember the guy's channel. I, I watched one other video with him once before. But apparently there's this whole thing now with these channels. This whole man cave type stuff and clothing and, you know, Americana, vintage workwear, all that sort of thing. And that's my that's me I live in workwear you guys know it you see it but it was never a uh, fashion thing for me like trying to be cool it was just comfortable it's what I wear as I've gotten older I've found things that I like like the fedora I recently got and the caps and everything else and you see me wearing these older flannels and all that and I like wearing something kind of nice a little bit you know other than I'm right now I'm just wearing shorts and t-shirt because it's hot and I'm working but I think more and more about it as I'm older, and uh, it's kind of nice to pull off a little bit of a look. I get it. But it was a real interesting video, and they were talking about these boots. And apparently, Westco now makes one that's not as wide of a toe and all that. And that's what I want to get into. So I, I took these out today. I tried to get them on. They were very, very snug. As you can imagine, my feet have widened quite a bit since going to the barefoot shoes. <sighs> I was going to throw my leg up there, but I forgot I'm 57 now. <laughs> so you can see the width difference just on the bottom of the sole, right? So I did get the uh, the boot on, and it was real, real snug up there. I thought these will be uncomfortable. But then I took out the insole I had in there, and I had forgotten. My feet are way wider than this, and they always really were. But I forgot I was doing this, so... I'm going to explain a little bit of the issue with my feet here that led to me going to the barefoot shoes. Because you can tell, this is going all the way back to 1999. Uh, I was wearing the all kinds of, I was wearing Danners. I had tried all kinds of different work boots. And in the 90s, I think around 96 or so, I think that's right. I was 95 or 96, I was working on a film. I did reshoots, it was called Restoration. Robert Downey Jr., Meg Ryan, Sam Neill. My name's not in the credits because I did the reshoots, but everything I did is in the movie. And while I was working on that one day, uh, I, I guess it was a ligament or a, ten, a tendon? Or my ligament. It was a ligament popped, and apparently it was the last one left in that left ankle. And it popped. It sounded like a gunshot going off. Guys around me heard it, and I went down like a ton of bricks. And they took me to the hospital, and it was a big deal. And I really couldn't work much for four years. They, fortunately, it was a film, so I was on disability. And I went to an orthopedic guy, and he set me in a chair, and he put my feet down, and he lined my feet correct, my ankles, and my first metatarsal, which is that big knuckle, right, that your big toe attaches to, is up in the air. So he's telling me, like, that's how I need to have my feet aligned to be healthy. Now, as a kid, I had torn ligaments and sprained my ankles a lot. I, was, I had corrective shoes when I started walking. I was pigeon-toed. I had a lot of issues. And the doctor always told me to wear a boot with a heel. So I did. When I was a kid, I wore boots a lot. Until high school, and I, got, I moved back down the shore, and I just went to Vans and Converse, which pretty much solved my problem. Or, you know, where I was barefoot and surfing and running around the beach all the time. But there wasn't a consensus on that. It seems like the medical industry wants to keep itself going. So they want to give you these insoles and all this other stuff. But honestly, I've proved it to myself. Just going barefoot is pretty much going to solve your problems. So at this time, they sent me to a doctor and he made me these ortho, these uh, you know, these insoles. But they were super stiff and uncomfortable. I couldn't get them in my boots and my foot at the same time. It was freaking stupid. So I started making my own, trying to correct this problem. I think that listening to them and doing it is partially what screwed my feet up because this morning, when I took this out and I put these boots on, they fit with room pretty well. I mean, you could tell that it's not as wide as the shoes I'm wearing right now, but it was okay, it was tolerable. So I can wear these. Um, I don't plan on it. What I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna put some oil on them. I brought some Neats oil with me. And I'm going to oil these up, and then I'm going to set them away for a while. Here's the funny thing about these boots. I have this funny idea. 
as I get older with this beard and everything is once I go white, you know, it's probably going to be another five years or so. Uh, with the leather craft I've been doing and everything else, uh, I just recently got a sewing machine. I think I want to make myself like a real authentic Santa outfit. I'm not talking like this cheesy stuff you see the, 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 the Santa's wearing at the store where you bring your kids. I mean like like a nice heavy corduroy maybe and if there's going to be white fur it's going to be real animal fur and the belt's going to be a nice thick cowhide leather with a real cast buckle and I might even have some pouches on the belt you know for stuff. I'm going to make it like this is what you would wear if you lived in a rugged area and this is the materials that you had. It's going to be like the real deal Santa outfit. It's going to blow your friggin' mind. And I'm thinking, why not try to make a little extra money at Christmas time doing like uh, corporate parties and parties and private events and things like that. Uh, and when I do, I'm going to be wearing these boots. <laughs> so I'm going to hold on to them. I know, I'm crazy. Now, I just want to jump into something else right here. Uh, it's a pretty quick video for you. I will say this, in 2007, I was doing pretty good financial, I was working a lot, making money, and I called Wesco, and I had them uh, make me a pair of boots. Um, and I had them lined in red, I had credit card pockets in there, I had a knife pocket sewn on the side, I found a stainless steel dive knife that fit in it perfect. I had to send those boots back three times, this thing's a motion sensor, there, was a, there we go, a little more light on the subject for you. And they could never, this is West Coast, this is 2007, I'm sure none of those people are there anymore, but they could never get that boot to fit right. There was just too much room in this area, and eventually they got it so tight I could barely get the boot on, and I gave up sending it back. And those boots were not inexpensive. I think they were damn near $1,000 at the time. By the way, this boot, when I bought it off the shelf, I can't remember if it was $299 or $399. Feel like it was more around the three hundred dollar range, but it could have been four. Right now on the website, you can buy this for five hundred and forty-one dollars. Yeah, you can find them on eBay for more. Um, it seems like they're in short supply at Wesco. I noticed that their boots now looks like they're doing triple needle stitching. This is only double, so I don't know. Uh, but one thing I saw, and they don't have it on the website, but I've seen people show them on video is an engineer boot with a wedge sole. Now I don't have a pair of them here, but I have something else I'm going to show you real quick here. It's an Ugg boot. And I picked these up, lightly used. Oh, I needed a rag, but I don't have it. They're a little dusty. <laughs> these are lined with sheepskin, as you would expect as Ugg boots. And uh, they were missing an insole, so I went on Amazon and I bought two new sheepskin insoles. So they're like brand new. You can see there's almost no wear on them. But you can see how much narrower the toe is even compared to the Wesco boot. Now this leather is pretty, you know, I can't, I was going to say it's pliable, but it's really not. Now these are marketed, these are very expensive by the way, these Ugg boots here. Um, I got a great deal on them because they were missing an insole and they were used. But again, you could tell they were hardly used at all. There's barely any wear on these things. I figured I'd take a chance on them because I thought it was kind of neat. But when I put them on now, even without a sock, they just they really are too tight up here in the toe. So I'm probably going to pass these on to somebody else. But what I like is that wedge sole. Now that's not a zero rise, obviously. But it's interesting to me. So what I think what I want to do is I want to find an engineer boot that has a wide toe like these, maybe even wider, that has a wedge sole. Or find a pair of these that fit that I can have resold with a wedge sole. I don't know. I'm going to figure something out. And I'm going to send this video to Chris too because uh, I think it would be neat to have an engineer style boot in the wide toe with no heel rise but a thick sole on it goes against Chris's uh, thing with the barefoot shoes. But I think it could be tough, man. A little extra thick leather and a thick new flex and a nice thick Vibram sole going across there. I think that would meet everything I want uh, in a boot. So anyhow, just throwing all this out there. I know it's kind of kooky. 
but these are some great old, you can't go wrong with Westco Engineer boots. That's just my opinion. I'm going to oil these up now, and I think I'll give you guys a final shot of them with some oil on it. So stick around. Don't go anywhere. It isn't over yet. All right, so I'll tell you, they look a lot better. I feel like I got them just in time. I'm using some Neat's Foot Oil on these. There's a brush built into this, so I brushed it on, and it just, it soaked right in. And then I kind of buffed them out with a cotton cloth. But uh, you got to go into your closet once in a while. It's, you could use this on your leather jackets, too, and I should do that again here pretty soon. But if you've got leather in your closet, it's been sitting there a long time. Get in there and condition it from time to time, because if you don't, it will eventually dry rot on you. And you'll go to pull these on one day, and this shaft will just come apart. So just a little quick tip for you. And that's it. I mean, these are super cool, these engineer boots. And like I said, they have saved my butt more than once. And uh, I think that's what Santa should be wearing, don't you? <laughs> That's it. You guys have a good day. I'll catch you all in the next one.